Welcome to Ask an Innovator, we, where we will dive into the mind, body, and soul of innovation. My name is Cole Snell. This is our very first interview. I'm really excited to be here. I am really excited and really blessed to have Sharla Brown, who, in my mind, is the ultimate innovator. Aww, thanks, Cole. What a thanks good for having me on the show. Yeah, great. And I think you're going to take me through this as much as I'm going to take you through it. Well, I'm, a, I'm a, like I said, I'm a good first guest because I've sat on that side of the chair. So I just want to congratulate you on doing this show. And I was absolutely honest, honored when you called me to, uh, to sit in this seat, you know, like an innovator maybe isn't always a title that how we perceive ourselves, you know, but how other people view us. And I'm, I'm honored that you called me. Yeah, and I, I'm so honored. And when I first moved to Thunder Bay about four years ago, it was a really interesting experience because I started to look around, loving innovation. Who, I started to look around at who was innovating, really. This name kept on coming up. Charlotte Brown, Charlotte Brown, Charlotte Brown. What's Charlotte doing? So having got to know you over the last four years or so, I've been so inspired. Question, first question, what does innovation mean to you? Well, I think innovation can mean very different things, but to me it's like people who see things differently or maybe look at something and say, I can change that or I can do something about that or maybe there's a better way of doing things. So I think it's like a person that just sees things differently. Mm -hmm. Like an artist? Could be like an artist. Like I think an innovator can be in any field or area. You know, I'm very much an entrepreneur, but there's other things that I'm very passionate about. I'm mm -hmm. a humanitarian at heart, you know, mm -hmm. so I think you can be innovative in any area. So like for me, it's been a lot of my business that I've, I've been very innovative in, but mm -hmm. I think it can apply to any field. Yeah, amazing. So um, how long have you been an innovator? How long have you been an entrepreneur? And I like to put the the idea of an innovator and an entrepreneur in the same box. How long have you been an entrepreneur? How long have you been an innovator? Well, exactly 20 years this month, wow. I started my first business. So um, yeah, I moved to Thunder Bay back when I was 17 to go to school. I, uh, I got a great job um, with the federal government when I was 18. And uh, I worked in a, in a great job, but it was the creative side of me that was you know, not being stimulated. And that's when I started my first business when I was 21. And it gave me that ability be, to be creative, not just creative, but to use my social side as well. Amazing, what business did you start at 21? So I actually got into doing direct sales. So it was kind of safe when you're young, you know, sign up for a company that kind of has a template for you to follow. Um, but I learned after the first year that even though I was their seventh highest salesperson in North America, they sent me wow. on an all expensive trip to China. Like I knew I had something in terms of my skills and my abilities, but there was lots of things that I didn't do. They did all the marketing and chose things. And like, for me, it was like, I want to do that kind of stuff. So uh, I didn't stick with it too long before I then started another business. And uh, so I've had a few businesses over the years, but it's as I've gotten older, I've became more innovative and, and maybe more of a risk taker and a little more brave to do things as right. well. Okay, so let's touch on risk. Risk is, is, I think, what deters so many people from becoming an innovator or an entrepreneur. Are you a risk taker? Oh, 100% I'm a risk taker. And uh, I kind of had a, you know, what some people will think of as like an aha moment where I realized everything that I wanted was on the other side of fear. And it was just taking awesome. a look in the, in the mirror one morning and saying, you know, I'm not scared anymore. Mm -hmm. What's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. And really playing those scenarios through because lots of times it's easy to get scared about doing things or you're looking for that safety and that security. But you're also not maybe living your purpose and your passion and you really have to make some choices and decisions that you know I how do you want to live your life I always want to say I don't want to wake up old and gray one day saying I wish I would have mm -hmm. I could have I should have but I didn't I, I want to at it. least say that I tried yeah I love it I love it I, I wrote down a, a couple questions here and I'm just gonna jump off on you you said fear fantastic I have a quote here that I wrote down uh, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson um, curiosity will conquer fear even more than bravery will Understanding we all have fears, do you think the curiosity of innovation allows you to manage fears? Absolutely, because it's the fact of um, weighing the pros and cons of things, you know, really mm -hmm. looking at what you want to do, the life you want to live, and the things that you need to do to get there, or living a mediocre life maybe, you know, settling for, you know, for me, I left a federal government job, which most people think I'm crazy to do that. You know, you have the pension, you have the benefits, you have the security. But I wake up every day now and I jump out of bed and I can't wait to start and I live my passion and purpose. But that takes, you know, getting over those fears and doing that. And mm -hmm. I always say you can live in faith or you can live in fear. And that's something that's really got me through that is very having a strong faith and realizing that there's yeah. a purpose for my life that's bigger than even I can see. Faith. We're going to get into faith uh, after the first break. And I think, we, you know, we talk often as being an entrepreneur, the physical, the creation, 
uh, the curiosities that we talked about, but the metaphysical is also a big part of, of everybody's life. We're going to get into that after the break. Um, something that I'm really fascinated to ask you, do you think you could ever go back and have a normal job? Do you think you could ever go back and work, say, uh, for somebody else? It would be a challenge. It right. would be tough. I never want to say never because life changes and evolves and you never know what life's going to bring you or throw at you or all that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's not like it's below me to do something. I don't view it like that. Or I think that people can li live their passion and their purpose through working for somebody else or like there's nothing that I'm downplaying about it. It's more of I love being an entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur is something that's just in your blood and woven tightly mm. and knit inside of you. And so I know that after 20 years, I couldn't imagine not having a business. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, and I think you do it best when you can focus on doing what you do well, as opposed to I worked full time or I then dropped to part time, but then trying to manage a business as well. You know, you really spread out that focus and I think you can do a better job when you, you put your whole heart into it. Amazing, what advice do you have for people who are in a job they don't like whether if it's working for somebody else or working for themselves, an unhappy job, what advice do you have for them to break out of that and empower themselves by doing what they want to do? Well, just exploring it. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to quit. I still stayed, had that job for 20 years and I was still an entrepreneur as well, you know, most of that time. So it's not the fact that you have Double to. Double dipping. It's not all <laughs> or nothing. That's right, yeah. absolutely. Like some, for some people, it's having some fun money on the side or, yeah. or being able to do something else that, that does stimulate that creative side. There's safe ways of doing it. Um, you know, there's a point where I think that people should, you know, you got to kind of trust and leap and believe that the net's going to appear as well. You know, like it's, it's, it can be a challenge, but I've helped women, a lot of women, mm -hmm. I mentor a lot of women to do that, that, you know, they've slowly broken away from their other job and now do what they do full time and realize like, it's not so scary afterwards that when you actually put your focus into everything that you're doing and that it's not just you, it's the relationships you make, it's the, the service that you provide, it's doing a good job that it just comes back to you tenfold and that it's bigger and better than you even imagined. So sometimes it's having that person that helps hold your hand, whether it's a coach or a mentor or things like that that help you get through those moments. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Uh, after the break, and we're gonna throw to the break, this will be my first time throwing to a break right now, so we'll see how I do. We're gonna throw to the break and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about uh, women a little bit. We have two images that I chose, powerful female images uh, from a local artist, a local innovator here. And I, I really want to um, ask you when we come back about your um, women that you look up to and women that have inspired you. Uh, so Ask an Innovator will be right back. Don't go anywhere. Charlotte Brown. 